must go home And the lights all went out in Massachusetts The day I left her standing on a road Ride to San Francisco Gotta do the things I wanna do And the lights all went out in Massachusetts The day I had a Listen, what were you like as kids, and were you naughty kids, and did you fight against each other? <laughs> what a good start. <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, that's a very good start, because at the very beginning we were, in fact, delinquents. <laughs> um, I, I had two years probation, in fact. We were, yeah, we were stealing cars and... Um... It was only a couple of years ago, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's OK now, though. Yeah, they, they actually, the police came to our house and uh, they told our mother and father that uh, it was a good idea to emigrate to Australia. That was basically the way they put it. Either go to Australia It was or... nice. It was very well put. It was well put. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and that's the truth. Yeah. So they said, you know, the boys are going to end up in reform school, so maybe it's time to take them away, you know. That's what Mum did. So they did. <laughs> it's a wonderful experience for those who haven't been to Australia. Australia is probably one of the most beautiful countries in the world and a great place to be brought up. That was Thank nice, you, actually, yeah. Is it Israel or Isla? Isla, how fantastic. We Australians think of you guys as being one of us. So what we. are your memories of being the Bee Gees Down Under? Well, we've well, been called many things. <laughs> um, the Bee Gees Down Under, never. Never. Um, um, wonderful, wonderful times. Um, living on the beach, always on the beach. Never in a house um, on the beach. <laughs> the girls. Um, so many think the smell of the bush, because that's, a, that's an unmistakable... <laughs> There's so many things come to mind. <laughs> Wonderful time. Thank you. Where was your first ever public performance and what did you sing? Uh, the first performance would probably be um, the Gormont Theatre in Manchester before we emigrated to Australia. Um, it's now a funeral home, by the way. That's right. That's fair comment, actually. <laughs> um, um, and and uh, we were we were gonna. Um, everyone was miming to records in those days. Not unusual. They're we're still doing kids, it. Remember, yeah. we were, we're yeah, it's all right. Don't have, right. have to apologize. Right. Um, <laughs> and, and we we chose a Paul Anker song to um, to mime to because we saw a kid the week before miming to Blue Suede Shoes, and we thought, oh, we got to do that, you know. And we were sort of practicing at home and singing and doing things like that with brushes with tin cans on the top and pretending they were microphones and all. 
and um, we'd never appeared publicly and, and the, we went to the cinema manager and we said can we get up and do what the kid did last week you know and uh, we, we got up and mimed to a song called I Love Your Baby no we didn't mime to the no, song no I we, broke the record Morris broke the record on the way to the theatre in those days records <laughs> broke yeah. you know um, <laughs> we're going to do that one but it broke so. yeah we, we were going to do I, I Love Your Baby um, the flip side of Diana I think it was yeah but we ended up doing Lollipop <laughs> <laughs> the, the point was that we knew we had to sing because we didn't want to let down the kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mama, lollipop, 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 well, thank you. How are you? You're not working tonight? No, no, they gave me a day off. <laughs> well, my question is actually somewhat related to that. Uh, Saturday Night Fever, the film, was a huge smash when it was released, and now uh, with its musical in the West End, which uh, yeah. I've seen, it's good. Yes, you're very, uh, you're, you're <laughs> excellent. Wonderful. Brilliant. What, what do you think is its, you know, enduring success? What makes it such an enduring success? Um, it's quite baffling because, you know, I mean, it's been, it's been like a roller coaster ride. That music has been up and down, up and down. People have liked it and then said, no, we shouldn't like it. And they said, oh, yes, we should. And then, no, we shouldn't. Not unlike and our so career, really. <laughs> <laughs> If a song is good, it will. You'll still be humming it in 20 years, and uh, that I think is why it works. Another question over here. My favourite track from Saturday Night Fever is Night Fever. What's yours? Ooh. Well, once again, we love them all, but our favourite. Well, we love ballads, so how deep is your love? Is is uh, always always a favour, always a favourite of ours. Um, yeah. Thank you. But um, but we'll, we'll we'll the one you mentioned is probably a very good cue, so we'll go into that one. How's that? <laughs> Yeah. 
to ask how important they've been in your lives and if any of your children have followed in your footsteps. Oh, actually, yes. Um, right, there is our mum. Yeah, Mala, mum. Stand up, mum. Stand up, mum. <laughs> mum is the foundation. Yes. She's like the, uh, yeah. She's like the Rose Kennedy of the... That's right. <laughs> And, and a fact that's not very well known is Mum has very strange sort of habits. She, um, can you hear me, Mother? You're right. Yeah. She, um, she always carries a pork pie around wherever she goes, just in case she gets hungry. Um, you think I'm joking? Show, show, show them the pork pie, Mum. Come on, you've got it in your bag, haven't you? Can't take her anywhere. Let's... 
Are you non believer You can take a woman out of Lancashire, but you can't take a Lancashire out of the woman. Question over here. Yes, sir. Where's the mic? Yeah, talking about the family obviously it matters a great deal to you, but on a serious note, in 1988 you lost your brother Andy. Yes. He must have been devastated by that, but he had a fabulous singing voice like the rest of you. Was there ever any prospect of him being in the band? Um, well, actually, Alistair, it's, it's uh, always the door was open for, for Andy to come in, but he was always, he was doing so well by himself. But the irony of it all is that we wrote the songs together, we produced the records together, well, Barry produced them, and we did the backtracks and vocals and things like that, so he was always part of us, you know, but in fact, the last album we did before Andy passed away was called One For All. And he was going to join us on that album. It's going to be like the Four Musketeers type of thing. Unfortunately, yeah. it was only the three of us, so we didn't quite make it. We're very fortunate, actually, because not most people can have videos and records and, right. and things like that and songs that he sang that always remind us that he's still with us. Perfect. So we're very fortunate in that way to have those memories. You know, so. And this is a great time, actually, for yeah, the song. We, uh, we dedicate this next song to Andy. It's about Andy. It was one of Andy's singles. And uh, it's called Don't Throw all the way. Dream! 
Hello, Tracy. Hello, Tracy. Um, mm, well, mine's a request, really. Pudding? Nothing. Oh, no, I'm really thinking it's going to make it worse. Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mine's a request, really. Um, I've always wanted to play the part of Sandy in the film Grease. Um, oh, yeah. What's your favourite role? Sandy. In the film Grease. Ah. <laughs> Uh, you mean Olivia or Sandy? <laughs> Both. Um, every guy would like to play John Travolta, and um, Adam Adam gets to do it. You know, gets to play the part of Tony Manero and um, and does it really well. And we'd all love to do that. All men would like to be that part. You know, especially Martha. in the 70s. You know, John the, Travolta. Oh, I'd like to have done Olivia actually. Would you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We could yes, be on Coronation right, Street. Could you get us on Coronation Street? Good voices. I mean, we could be right there. Sound with this, by all means. And we could walk in the Rovers. You know, hello. Yeah. <laughs> hello, Chuck. Now we've got another one coming up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ian, how you doing? Ah. Ah. All right. I just wanted to do that. I told them not to sit you there. <laughs> Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, I'm a member of a team, and uh, as you are all team members, I was wondering how you get on as a team. Uh, what do we do? Actually, yeah, go ahead. Well, we're all a team, actually. Yeah. And we've been together since, what, well, Ron and I were five. You know, and well, Barry was... We've been together since birth, Morris. Well, yeah. true. <laughs> no, but I mean, singing together. Actually, you're half an hour older than me, so it's not quite right. Actually, I only started remembering you around five. <laughs> Oh, no, Norman, where are you? Oh, there you are. <laughs> uh, as we can see tonight, you've had loads of hits and you've also written lots of uh, songs for other people. Two questions, who have you written songs for? And secondly, when you've given these great songs away and they've had a hit, do you feel a bit jealous about that? Ooh. Sometimes. Yeah, more envious than jealous, because we're not quite sure how, how strong a, a record is going to be or how strong the song is going to be. Um, mm. And The Stream is a perfect example of that. Heartbreaker is a perfect example of Dionne Warwick. Chain Reaction is a perfect example of Diana Ross. And um, yes, sometimes, yeah. That's okay, quite... okay, shall we do a bit? Yeah, all right. You want to run the middle? Mm. Come on, Chuck. <laughs> Why do you have to be a heartbreaker? It ain't a lesson that I've never knew. Got to get out of the spell, pain I'm under. My love for you. Why do you have to be a heartbreaker? When I was being what you want me to be. Suddenly everything I ever wanted Has passed me by This world may have Not you and I Sing, 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 darling How grand we are Little by little we meet in the middle There's danger in the dark It ought to be illegal Making a crime to be out in the cold It ought to be illegal You got a reason for living You better along With the love you're living on You gotta be mine We take it away It's gotta be nice and ain't just a matter of time And we got nothing to be guilty of Our love will climb any mountain near your far We are And we never let it end And we got nothing to be sorry for Our love is one in a million eyes can see That we got a high to the sky Don't want to hear your goodbye Don't want to hear your goodbye I don't want to hear you And we got nothing And we got nothing to be guilty of Our love will climb any mountain near or far We are and we never let it in 
And we got nothing to be sorry for Our life is one in a million nights can see That we got a highway to the sky Don't wanna hear goodbye Don't wanna hear goodbye Tremble when your hand moves a look You taste a little and you swallow slow Make your hands a way of yielding treasure Pleasure made for you And I'll be there, your future is on the run Shine a light for the whole world over You set your heart on steel and my heart will cry and die Oh, you gotta do it Get in the middle of the chain you get a middle where you're last in action I wanna get your love already Sweet sensation, instant radiation You let me hold you for the first explosion We made a picture of a love emotion My arms will cover, my lips will sober you No more left to say We talk about love, love, love We talk about love
Right, sit yourselves. Right, control yourselves now. <laughs> yes, Bill. Hello, Bill. Hello, oh, Bill. <laughs> Hello, Bill. <laughs> I'm hiding behind you? Frank. Sorry. <laughs> Good man to hide behind. <laughs> Yeah, like on that one. You've also had that distinctive sort of vocal thing. Um, where did you get these ideas for it from? You weren't, weren't the Andrews sisters or the Stones, was it? Yeah. Stones, so, who's played a part in it? There's no, quite, no question about that. Uh, well, there's um, nothing like a good swift kick in the right place can help. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good to got the false setup business. Actually, that was really influenced by the stylistics, um, oh, yeah. people like that. There were the, the Delphonics. Yeah, the R&B groups of the time, you know. Yeah. And actually, the Four Seasons were doing it much longer before that, and the Beach Boys were also doing falsetto stuff, you know. But it's actually Reef Mardin who was producing the main course album, and uh, with Jive talking on and, and stuff like that. And we had this track called Nights on Broadway, and he wanted to know if anybody could scream in tune. <laughs> Of course, everybody can. So uh, Barry said, I'll have a go at it. So he goes out and he started the falsetto ad-libs at the end of it. And yeah. uh, it was from then on, he said, maybe we should do one in lead like this. Yeah. And it went on from there, you know. There, but, there was no falsetto until that song. Yeah, but we no, weren't we the first to do it. It was just, it was, just this, it was more R&B sounding. That's yeah. why we liked it. Mm. Yeah, definitely. All right. Thanks a lot. Nice one, Bill. Thanks. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Where's the man? The man, in uh, 1969, you decided to split up. Why was that? And then... <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't decide to split up. Um, <laughs> I think it was probably... Can I start off? Yeah. It's more spontaneous, yeah, it's wasn't it? More, yeah. It was more yeah. of a spontaneous blast. Um, it, was, it, was, it was sort of what we call well, uh, first fame. Uh, when somebody, when, when you get famous for the first time, I think you, your ego gets out of control, you, have to, you, you start to get too much money. We started arguing in the press, you know, it, it, this is a big pitfall for most groups when you start fighting with each other through the newspapers. Instead of talking to each other, we would actually argue through the newspapers. And Which was fun. So how did Which you get back nice. together again? How did we get back together again? Well, Robin came to see me, I was living in Kensington at the time, and it was about uh, 15 months later. And Robin came and, and sat, we sat down and he talked and he, he said that, you know... Kick me out. It, it, <laughs> no, he, he said, that, you know, let, let's, let's, let's do it again because it's, 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 he'd had some success himself. He'd had Saved by the Bell, which was a really big hit record for him. But it was not the same as the three of us. And no. Robin, as Robin coined it then, it's not nice when you have success on your own. When Robin came around that day, both of us had a bit of a strum and the song that, the idea that came from that, and then Morris joined in and we finished the song together. Uh, that song was called How Can You Mend a Broken Heart? And it really represented how we all felt. And uh, we'll do it now for you. I can think of younger days when living for my life Was everything a man could want to do I could never see tomorrow No one said a word about the sorrow How can you make a broken heart? you stop the rain from falling down? How can you stop the sun from shining? What makes the world go round? How can you mend this broken man? How can a loser ever win? Please help he met my broken heart And let me live again I can still feel the breeze That rustles through the trees And misty memories Days come by I could never see tomorrow
Angela, how are you doing, Joe? Right, I'm a bit confused. Oh, yeah. so am I, I know. I'm a bit confused. Right, where were you born? Was it Manchester or was it Australia? Which one? No, we were born in the Isle of Man. So, <laughs> that, uh, all right. All right, we were born in the Isle of Man and then, and then we moved to uh, Manchester and then we moved to uh, the Australia from there. Oh, right. Yeah. But thank you, Angela. And um, it's, oh, like yeah, but the Isle of Man thing's got those three legs on it. That's yeah. all. Yeah. 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 Whatever you throw us, we land on our feet. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> um, but that's a nice cue, and it gives us a chance to do the. Um, Hang on. What? Well, something's happening. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this next song we're going to sing is actually, and not many people know this, but the Isle of Man has a national anthem. And uh, this is it. It's called Ellen Van. It's the unofficial national anthem, actually. When the summer day is over It's busy cares have flown I will sing beneath the starlight With a weary heart Then arise like a vision Sparkling bright it shines for me My own dear Ellen Vanner With its green hills by the sea Let me hear the ocean murmur Let me watch your starry sky Stand above the emerald waters Sing the seagull as she flies
smile A smile can bring you near to me Don't ever let me find you gone Cause that would bring a tear to me This world has lost its glory Let's start a brand new story now The joke was on me Oh no I started to cry Which started the whole world laughing Oh if I only see That the joke was on me Hurting my head From things that I said Till I finally died Which started the whole world Living Oh, if I can see That the joke was on me Hurting my head from things 
that I said To part by the time We started the whole Living Or we pine on the scene That the joke was on me Oh, no That the joke was on me Okay. Right, Rory, where are you? <laughs> I've been on uh, many rugby trips and tours abroad. Uh, you've, uh, you're on the middle of a world tour now, and I'm sure over the years you've uh, had some amusing stories to tell us about people you've met and places you've been. The greatest story of all, <laughs> for us anyway, was a personal appearance we made in Jakarta in Indonesia. And it was a monsoon. A monsoon struck on the night of the show, and there was about 70,000 natives with spears, you know, like, Massachusetts, Massachusetts. <laughs> and, um, I remember that. I do, I'll never forget it. <laughs> and, uh, but it was very much a military-style government, you know, Sukarno and people like that. So uh, they did, the crowd wanted to leave, but the, uh, the army wouldn't let them, so they turned all the guns on the crowd, and they sort of <laughs> told them, I've had an audience by force before, but this was the first time. Um, and the, uh, the guy that was, the, the military man in charge came up to us and said, will you go on? And we said, well, there's an inch of water on the stage. If we go on the stage, you know, we'd get killed. You know, there's like an inch of water. If you touch the microphone, you're gone, you know. And we said, well, we, we just, you know, you can't go on like this. We have to wait until it dries up. It's impossible. And, uh, and the guy actually said, well, we've got, there's a group going on before you. If they come off alive, will you go on? <laughs> Thanks a lot. But that takes us to the song that we mentioned earlier about On Fever, which is our favourite. It's called How Deep Is Your Love. We hope you like it.
Before I uh, ask my question, can I just say one thing? And I'm sure this is not just for me, but for everybody here tonight. It's great to be in the presence of three icons of the music. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Out of everything you've achieved in your whole career, and you've achieved a hell of a lot, what is the proudest moment you can recall? Do we have an answer for that? Uh, I would say... I would say the British Music Awards. Yeah. yeah. The Lifetime Achievement, the, the uh, contribution to British music. Mm. That is the most honourable award. Because we're British we, and getting that. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. Bye, bye. Thank you for asking, Sam. That's great. OK, well, I guess this is our wrapping up time. We're going to play out a little bit, a few songs here. <laughs> I'd like to thank you all for coming. It's been a wonderful night. Thanks again. Here we go.
Começa agora o Jornal da Noite.